Hey everybody, Coach MJ here. Welcome back. You guys, I cannot believe I have not done a video for you in five weeks. So tonight's topic is how to find the right running shoe for you. If you don't know who I am, my name is Coach MJ Gassick. I am a professional triathlon coach. I've been coaching since 2008 and since 2010, this has been my full time job. So this is all I do 24 seven, you guys. Hey, welcome Candace, Aaron, Cheryl. Welcome. Thank you guys. You, I can't. So after a full year, a full year of like every Sunday night doing videos, I took five weeks off the last five weeks. I have missed you guys. I've missed you guys. Hey, Lisa, welcome. Thanks for hopping in. Oh, see, and I got this little glare there going. I'm going to fi have fixed that for next week. But yeah, I, I, you know, I've missed doing this for you. I've missed chatting with you guys. I've missed your questions, your comments, um, the interaction that we have each week. But I have planned a full year of more videos educational, informational stuff for you so that you can become a better athlete. Hey, Nora. Hey, Jackie. Thank you guys for hopping in tonight. How to find the right running shoes for you. So, like I said, I've been a professional coach. You know, I've been doing it since 2008. I did that on the side for a couple years. And then I quit my full-time job and did this full-time starting in 2010. Now, during that time, I have worked in several different running shoe stores. Now you might ask, MJ, why are you doing that? Well, working at a running shoe store is a great way to meet other triathletes or people who don't really know that they want to get into triathlon. So that's kind of why I do it. And what's really cool about it is I get to meet a lot of very fun people. What's also really cool about it is I know a lot of the questions we get, a lot of the concerns we get, a lot of the things that people do and don't do. I know the rights and wrongs of getting the right running shoe. Hey, Jim. Jim. Hey, Susie. Thank you guys for hopping in. So tonight, really cool. The giveaway is I want to give somebody watching this broadcast $25 to put towards their next pair of running shoes. So I am not just going to send you $25 to do whatever you want with it. No. I'm going to help you buy uh, your next pair of running shoes. It's going to be $25. How do you enter the contest to get that $25? You got to do two things. One, you have to go to the tryrightcoaching.com slash tryright giveaway. It's tryright hyphen giveaway this week. Okay. And then what you need to do is take a picture of your favorite running shoes and post them in the comments below because I'm really curious not just as a coach, but as someone who has worked in running stores off and on for like the last eight, maybe even nine years. Uh, I'm real curious to see what your guys' choices are. And I think, well, I'm not going to tell you what I think because I really want to know what what you guys like. So all you have to do is take a picture of your favorite running shoes. They don't have to be brand new. Just take a picture of them, post it in the comments, and then we'll just kind of see who likes what. Okay, kind of a popularity contest. Um, oh, thanks, Jackie. I appreciate that. Hey, Maribel. All right. The very first thing to finding your perfect running shoe is, number one, go to a specialty running store. And I know Mel's not on this broadcast, but hi, Mel. I work at Running for Kicks in Payless Heights. And um, I can't say enough about kind of what we do. And it's it's actually very rewarding to have people come in and they're, They've got this problem or that problem or that question, and we help them. It's really all what it's about is helping people. And they, they come in and they say they went and bought their shoes at XYZ. So put in your big name department store or specialty discount store. Okay, put in whatever you want there. But those shoes that they sell at places like that are not of the quality that you will get at a specialty running store. So many times uh, clients will come in or uh, customers will come into the store and say, oh yeah, uh, I run an Asics. Love ya, that's great, great brand, that doesn't tell me anything. And here's why. That's just like saying, I drive a Honda. Well, a Honda what? 
It's the same thing with the shoe. Asics what? I mean, that doesn't really help me. So two things. Go to a specialty running store, number one. But number two, bring your old pair of running shoes with you when you go. There's a lot that we can tell from the wear pattern of the bottom of the shoe. And you might think, yeah, MJ, I've heard that's not a big deal. No, it is because we look at those things and we can tell, number one, if you're in the right type of shoe. Number two, if it's a quality shoe. Number three, if you're complaining about a certain ailment or pain or ache that you have, by looking at the shoe, we can maybe determine what was the contributing factor to that problem so we can fix it on your next pair. Hey, Lilia. Hey, Julie. Hey, Jackie. Julie, you got to put a picture. I don't want to know just, but I love Brooks Ghost, but <laughs> you got to put a picture. I want to see the shoes that you guys are running in. Glycerin. Ooh, glycerin. High cushion neutral. Yeah. Uh, Brooks. Yeah. You know what? I'm going to show you my favorite running shoe, but not yet. <laughs> uh, I'm very picky and I'll tell you a quick story about it later. So, but I would say go to a specialty running store and yes, you are going to pay a little bit more, but let me tell you, if you get injured, you're going to pay even more and you're going to suffer because you may miss some races because you're not healthy or you might have to pay for physical therapy. So let's make sure you get the right running shoes for you so you don't have the injuries and you don't have to go to PT and you don't have to miss any of your races due to some injury, right? How do you attach a picture? Uh, you should just be able to do it like a regular post, right? Maybe not during live. Maybe it has to be done. I don't know. Lisa, do you know? A6 Nimbus. Nimbus. Another high cushion neutral. Um, video is done. You can post a picture. Okay. So go out and get your shoes, y'all. Hey, Jennifer. Thank you guys so much for hopping in. I've missed you. Welcome back. All right. So go to the specialty running store. Any good specialty running store? Couple things. One, every single person that works there is going to have a running background. All right. I know that we all do. And it's kind of fun because we talk about it all the time. Number two, they're going to show you two several different models. Uh, number three, they're going to have a really good return policy. In other words, if you go take that shoe out and you go like running for kicks, we have 30 days, right? So if you go take that shoe out and two weeks later, you're like, you know what? It's, it's not working. I don't like it. This is hurting me. This is that, that, that. Bring it back. No questions asked. You can exchange it for another shoe. You can get your money back. Um, I would tell you to exchange it for another shoot. But anyway, number two, try several different models. Again, I, okay, keep in mind, I don't get commission on anything I sell at the store. So whether you come in and you buy nothing or you come in and you buy 10 pairs of shoes, doesn't matter to me, it matters to Mel. Hi, Mel, but it doesn't matter to me. My job is to make sure that you get what's good for you. So I, when you come in and I ask you questions about um, do you have any injuries? Uh, well, how many miles are you running? Are you training for anything? What's your experience? What kind of shoes do you like? What have you run in? We just keep asking questions. And as a customer, you just think you're having a conversation. But as a, an employee, I'm learning a lot about you. And I'm taking into consideration those questions. As I'm measuring you, as I'm looking at your arches, as I'm watching your gait, I'm, I'm assessing those answers that you give to the questions so I can decide which pairs of shoes I want to bring out to have you try. And like I said, several um, models. So many people will come in and say, let's go. Brooks Ghost. I want a Brooks Ghost. That's all I like. Blah, blah, blah. Fine. I will do that for you. But even if you're a loyal Brooks Ghost customer, I would encourage you every time you go in, try other pair. Try other pairs of shoes. You never know. Hey, Donna. Oh, pictures after live video. Thank you, Lisa. Um, live and die by the glycerin. Glycerin. Tried Ghost and fell in love. Wait. So wait, Maribel, glycerin or ghost? Both Brooks, glycerin's high cushion, ghost is regular, normal cushion. So anyway, um, so try several, several different models and here's my quick story. I am a very loyal, hang on, I got it here. I don't get sponsored by them and I really should. Mizuno, I'm a very loyal Mizuno fan. I have been running Mizunos for years and years. You guys, I started out with Nike. I went to Asics. I went to Brooks. I went to Saucony. Uh, and then I found Mizuno and I haven't gone back. But um, actually, I kind of run in all of them a little bit just to test them out so I can talk to customers about them. However, let me tell you this quick story. This is way back when, before I even started working at any running stores, I fell in love with Mizuno shoes. And every time I went into to the store, 
running for kicks. Mel would always wait on me. And um, I would always be like, ah, the Mizunos are the best. That's the ones I want. So the last few times I would go in, I, I he knows, I, you know, I'm a neutral gate. And I said, I would go in and say, give me every shoe except Mizuno. I want to make a change. I want to try something different. I want to see if something's better. And I'll try them all. I'm like, oh, okay, okay. And then I'd say, you know what? Can you bring out the Mizuno? Just let me compare. He'd bring it out, and I'd be like, yep, that's the one. But I gave it a chance. I did give it a chance. And you guys, I love the glycerin. I love and the Nimbus. Um, I well, um, like I said, I love all the neutrals. But but um, that's my favorite running shoe. And like I said, Mizuno should sponsor me, but they don't. <laughs> um, Love how he knows what you to grab for me. Yes, Donna. I mean, I'm just saying. And, and I, you know, after a while, I mean, I have obviously haven't been doing this as long as Mel, but uh, I kind of know after a while, like, what people do and what people like. And e even knowing what you walk in wearing, uh, we can tell a lot. We can tell a lot. Hey, Rebecca. I, I think you met Mizuno, but it didn't really come out right. But that's okay. All right. So make sure that you try several, several different models. Even if you have a favorite, you guys, that are loyal to your brands, and I appreciate that. Don't get me wrong. Try some other ones on. Sometimes they make changes, not to just the shoe that you're um, using, but to other models. And even like Mizuno came out with a new one, the Sky, and I had to try it on, of course. And I'm like, oh, okay, so new model for me. Anyway, you need to just mix it up. And if you go back to your normal brand, that's great. But maybe you're going to buy a second one. And I encourage you, if you're going to buy two pairs of shoes, don't buy two identical. So like not two glycerins or two nimbuses. Buy maybe a glycerin and a nimbus or a glycerin and a ghost. Like I recommend um, changing it just a little bit because especially if you're getting like up into high miles, each shoe is structured a little bit differently. So it's going to work your muscles a little bit differently. So it's going to mean less chance of injury. That's how it works. Hey, hi, Rebecca. Hi. Okay, number three. Always want to go up a half size from your dress shoe. Ladies, it does not matter what size your shoe is because women, you guys are the worst when it comes to, oh, no, I am not a nine. I am an eight and a half, and I will not go any higher, and that's the shoe I want, and a blah, 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 blah. When you go into a running store let the prof let let the let the employees just try, humor them. Just let try it. If it doesn't work, then you can go to what you want. But here's the thing: when you're in an athletic shoe, right? You're working out. You're running. You're getting hot. Your feet get warm. They start to swell. They expand. They hit the top of the toe box. Okay. You always want a thumbs width up here. I don't care whether you wear a 12. Do you really think that people, when you meet, hey guys, what's up? Oh girl, what size shoes do you wear? Because your feet are big. Who does that? So don't worry so much. Don't be so vain. Who cares? Just get the shoes that fit you, that fit well, that you like. Okay? So yeah, no, I'm a short girl and I wear some big old honking shoes. I don't care. Because you know what? I like my toenails. I would like to keep them. And when you wear shoes that are too small, that's usually what happens. Your toenails go black and you lose them. Okay, number four, assess for comfort, the arch. So in any running shoe, let me just show you. So uh, like I said, I am, this, is my, this is one of my shoes. Um, this is a neutral running shoe. Each brand has a different, they, they're, they're made differently. They have different materials, but they all have some of the same properties. In other words, they all, all of them have a little bit of gel cushion. That's just kind of what they do. They all have cushion. They all have support. But a stability shoe is going to have more support, more dense material in the arch than, say, a neutral shoe because it's trying to prevent your ankle from turning in as you run. So Mizuno uses what's called wave plate technology. So there's only one in here, okay? And I don't have, I don't have a second shoe because I'm, I'm a neutral but like so there's only one if this was a stability shoe you'd see two plates in here to give it more density here in the arch okay this one here is a Saucony I don't run the shoe but you could see here that this is kind of a marbled material I'm not sure if you can see it it's kind of a dirty shoe um, it's marbled this is to show where the material is more dense this is a stability shoe okay so all it means is it's going to keep your foot, it's going to push a little bit more, it's a little bit dense, like I said, denser material so that your ankle doesn't turn in as you step, 
okay? So those are the two, the, the third one is a motion control shoe, which I don't even have one to show you. It's a small percentage of the people that need that one. Um, and that's for different issues. But in any case, um, you want to assess the shoe for comfort. So even if the the salespeople bring out shoes and you put it on and I say, this is a neutral shoe, this is a great shoe for you, put it on and there you go. And you're like, nope, it doesn't feel right. The arch doesn't fit right. There is a particular brand of shoes, which I'm not going to say on here because I don't want to affect what I do. Um, the arch just doesn't fit my foot right. I mean, it's just, it, it's too far back compared to where my arch is. So all shoes are made a bit, little bit differently and that's another reason why you want to try a couple because you might fit, put this shoe on and say, oh, this shoe fits well, it's good, it's okay, I like it. But that's not the reaction I'm looking for. The reaction I'm looking for is, oh my gosh, this shoe's fantastic, feels so good. Yep, this is the one I want. That's the reaction I really look for, okay? So sometimes, even if it's the right kind of shoe, and it, even if it's something that you've been running with for years, sometimes it changes. So what you really want to do is make sure that you buy the shoe that fits the best, that feels the best, particularly in the arch. Oh, and the heel as well. Okay, so if the if it if the heel if your if your heel is sliding out the back. There's a, a trick we can use the runner's tie, right? And I'll show you that on a whole different video. But um, you don't want that. That's You're, gonna, you're just going to get blisters in the back. So the shoe that fits properly, number five, is going to be snug but not tight. And I read something, and I thought this was pretty cool, and it does apply, at least to me it applies. A good running shoe, if you know it's the good fit, if you put it on and you don't tie it, well, this is these are yanks, so don't, those are going to fit no matter what, right? So this shoe right here, I don't tie it, but I put it on. It does not, this does not fall off my foot. It's how I, it, it fits. It's the right size. If it was too big, I would be, without tying it, I would be dragging the heel of the shoe. And you could see, I'm not really dragging the heel of that shoe. Okay. So you should be able to put the shoe on without tying it, and it still stays on. I mean, I don't recommend running that way, but but that's how you know if the shoe is is the right size for you. You should be able to put it on without tying it and it still stays comfortably on your foot. You want the shoe to be snug, not tight, not tight at all. Like I would consider even a biking shoe snug and not tight. Um, oh, the t the tie nails. What? I I missed it. I missed it. Hey Ryan, Saucony, awesome. Hi Cherie. Elastic shoe, shoelaces. I know, Ryan. I don't know what kind you use. We'll ha we could do a whole other video on that. But these are Yanks. These are my favorite brand. I'm probably going to get some Try Right logo on them. I just have to wait for some cash to roll into the team. So anyway, okay. So the shoes, you need them to be snug and not tight. And the last thing, they need to feel great, not look great. And so if you have young kids at home who are, you know, uh, grade school, teenage, teenage-ish, and they go and they just pick the first pair of cute shoes that they see or that they want to match their school colors. Not the way to do it, you guys. Oh, and here's another quick story. This was years ago again, and I went in to running for kicks, and I went to get the shoes, and they pull out my Mizunos and blah, 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 and I'm like, yeah, they feel great. They were the ugliest shoes ever. They were Mizuno, don't hate me. They were orange with red shoelaces. I was like, they were so ugly. I'm like, but they fit so good and they felt so good. I was like, eh, you know what? I'm going to be out of these shoes in like three or four months anyway with the miles I put on. So it doesn't really matter. But they were just, I just had to get over the fact of what they looked like. And, and that's another thing. I'll see so many customers come in and we have mirrors on the floor. So you could see and they'll, co they'll come and they'll walk and they'll stand in front of the mirror with the shoes on. Does I tell the kids whenever I'm working on a kid and they're looking, I said, stop looking at the shoe. I'll put one on one foot, one on the other foot, two different brands. I'm like, don't look at them. I want you to tell me which one feels better. Because nine times out of ten, they want to go with what looks cute, what looks good, what matches whatever they can wear. Oh, I want the black shoes. I want this shoe. I want No, I want you to get a pair of shoes that's good for your gait, that's comfortable, that fits well. Once you find the right shoe, the fit, then you can look at what other colors that particular shoe comes in. So kind of put that out the door. And you guys, shoe colors are all over the place. 
Um, it's very unlikely that you'll match exactly what you're looking for anyway. So rule of thumb, get what feels best, not what looks best. All right. Hey, Cherie. Toenails you might. Oh, <laughs> how do you figure out if you're a pronator or neutral, et cetera? Ooh, Rebecca, great question. That's why I tell you to go to the specialty running store. That one of the things that we do, we look at your arch, okay? And we look at what your gait looks like when you walk. You can try to do this at home. I've tried to do it at home. It's not the same thing. And I always don't trust myself. Trust someone who does it on a day-to-day -day basis has looked at thousands and thousands of people, right? I mean, like I said, I've been doing it for eight years. I mean, I can, I can, you know what? Send me a video. <laughs> walk away, walk away from the camera, walk towards the camera. All I need is your, is, uh, I need to be able to see your ankles. So if you're wearing pants, roll them up to your knees, right? I need to be able to see that. Walk away from the camera for 10 steps, walk towards the camera for 10 steps, and I'll give you an assessment, okay? Just send that. Ooh, put that in the comments below. I'll help you out. Um, because I used to do, Again, before I knew about all this, the barefoot test, right? Whatever you, you would, you, what they told you to do, and you know it's nice outside in summertime. Put your feet in water, like step in a bucket of water, and then walk ten steps ag across the uh, the deck, and then you could tell what you needed. That only that's only tells half the story, okay? But that's what I used to try and do to assess my shoe category, and I was wrong. So I always let the professionals do what they do best. It's not, Maribel. It's not hard to buy ugly. You got to buy comfortable. Let the ugly part go. Run more, and then you get a new pair of shoes. <laughs> All right, you guys. Thank you so much. Again, okay, so oh, I keep I forgot to tell you. I'm just so excited to be back. Go to tryrightcoaching.com slash tryright hyphen, not an underscore, hyphen giveaway um, to enter the raffle to get $25 towards the next pair of shoes. Again, it's toward a pair of shoes. It's You're not going to get cash. You're not going to get a check just for $25 to do whatever you want. You're going to get it towards a pair of running shoes and I got a way to figure that out. So you got to do two things. You got to go to trywritecoaching.com slash trywrite hyphen giveaway. But then you also, you have to do both. You also have to put a picture of your favorite running shoes in the comments below as soon as this video is done. Um, and I'm not going to pick this until next week anyway. So you still have some time, but yeah. Ta -da! Uh, again, do you think I would pick a white shoe? Especially if you run at Waterfall Glen, it's so dirty there. I've only run on the, I haven't, I'm only running these twice, but this has only been on pavement, so that's why they look so clean. All right. Oh, thank you, Cherie. Hey, Donna. Yeah, thank you guys so much. Oh my gosh, I forgot to, to write down what next week's topic is, but I am back. You know, I took off the last five weeks. I think the first couple I had uh, some family issues I was going through, and then it was Christmas Eve, then New Year's Eve. And then last week, I was so sick, there was no way I wanted to put myself on camera. Y'all didn't want to see that. Mm -mm. So <laughs> thank you guys so much for uh, hopping in tonight. I hope you found the va information valuable. If you did, please share this video with someone that you think might find this information valuable. Sh shoes are so important for you to get the right ones so that you stay healthy, you're able to do your races, you're able to do your training, and be comfortable. Okay, so thanks so much for hopping in. Make sure you go to trywritecoaching.com slash trywrite hyphen giveaway, right? All you gotta do, I think, is just enter your first name and your email and then show me a picture of your favorite running shoes. I'm kind of taking a little informal poll here of who likes what. Share me a, show a picture of your favorite running shoes and then we're gonna compare notes next Sunday night. So thank you guys so much for hopping in. I've missed you all so much and I hope you join me here next Sunday night live, 7 p.m. Central, where we'll talk about some other great topic that's going to help you be a better athlete. All right? Have a great week, you guys, and I'll see you next weekend.